Aloha. Aloha. Let's see here. Are you up to uh, saying this again? Happy New Year. Okay, I know it wasn't as enthusiastic as last week. <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, it's still very much a new year. Uh, I mean, after all, we have lava again in Hale Mau Mau. I mean, what more can you ask for? So, on this morning, the uh, Christian calendar actually has two holidays to celebrate, and I'm completely ignoring one of them in favor of the other. I... Uh, on the 6th of January, the Christian calendar says it is the epiphany, that is the manifestation of Jesus. It's the day on which we celebrate the arrival of the Magi with their gifts in Bethlehem. On the first Sunday after epiphany, we recognize the baptism of Jesus. That's the one I'm ignoring. So today, today is about a star. Today is about a burst of awareness. Today is about bringing more light into the world. So come on this day, whether you are physically present in the sanctuary, viewing live over the internet, or participating via the recorded stream, come and let us explore how we might bring more light into our souls and into the world. Let us worship God. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of the holy name. We worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders over mighty waters. 
May the Lord give strength to the people. May the Lord bless all people with peace. Let us worship God. Please join me in the invocation. We come to you, God of majesty, in awe at the way you have come to us in the person of Jesus. Unlike earthly rulers, he would not break a bruised reed or quench a dimly burning wick. He faithfully labors to bring us to righteousness and justice. God, you have come to be a light to the nations, to heal human ills, to free the prisoners from their chains. To you and no other we bring our praise, O God. You and no other are worthy of worship. Accept our prayers this day, O God, and may new blessings arise among us. Amen. Well, folks, we are still singing together, so please rise. But uh, Doug and I are going to return here to the microphones so that we can more easily lead you all in singing our hymns each Sunday. Yes, 
please be seated. That is, please be seated unless you consider yourself a young person in the congregation, in which case, come on down front. I've got a story for you. And as you've probably noticed, we have rediscovered the magic of a wireless microphone that I could wear. Ooh. <laughs> I literally forgot we had this. Anyway, this story, however, is not about what I've forgotten. It is hopefully about what I've remembered. Because what I remember is that camels are not night owls. For that matter, a pueo is not a night owl either. A pueo is a day owl. But anyway, camels like the daytime. Now, if I were a desert creature, I would be heading towards the nighttime because the daytime sun in the desert would basically make me turn the same color as my shirt. But camels, that's not a problem. This camel, this camel was an unhappy camel. camel. He was a grumpy camel. He was a pretty crabby camel. Now, why was he a grumpy camel? Well, first of all, it was because he was a burdened beast. That is, people were putting stuff on his kind of humpy back and making him carry it through the days. Now, sometimes it was a person, and sometimes it was some sort of collection of goods, and there was one particular load of goods. Oh, man, he just really, really didn't like that load of goods because it was heavy, and it kind of clinked a little bit, and he didn't like the way it jingled. And all in all, it was just a bad thing. And he said, this feels like it's made of lead. And one of the other camels said, I think it's gold. And this camel said, well, it weighs like it's lead, which actually is pretty close, because lead and gold weigh about the same. And as they went on, he continued to be a grumpy camel, because, you see, they were traveling a long distance. Now, camels can travel a long distance, but that doesn't mean they like it. And this camel didn't like it. I don't think we'll ever get there, he said. I think we're getting closer, said one of the other camels. I don't think we'll ever get there, said the camel. And finally, this camel was grumpy because, as previously mentioned, camels are daytime creatures, and they did all their traveling at night. Why, why, why can't these stupid stargazers travel during the day, said the camel. I think they're following a star, said one of the other camels. Huh, said this camel, more light. I want more light. Well, eventually the journey did end. And uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't lead, it was gold. You've probably figured out who this camel was working for, haven't you? Yeah? You folks out there clear on who this camel was working for? Yeah. The curious thing was, when they got where they were going, our grumpy camel, well, for a moment he got curious kind of unexpectedly curious, and he, he stuck his nose in a window to see what all the fuss was about, and he saw the people that he'd been working for presenting the things that he'd been carrying to a baby. Now, the camel didn't think that gold was a very good thing for a baby to play with, and certainly the frankincense and the myrrh didn't make a lot of sense for a baby, but but it did look like the family could use some help. They were kind of looking worn and maybe just a little bit scared. Maybe just a little bit scared. Just that one glimpse of that child with all those gifts started to make the camel feel better. And 
As they were heading back home, he was feeling a lot better. I mean, he was feeling better because, well, they were on their way home. And he didn't have to carry all the heavy stuff anymore. And oh yeah, and they were traveling during the daytime. That was better. But really, he was feeling better because he suddenly realized that he had been a part of something important, something big, something that was making the world better. And as they made their way along the trail, he said to himself, more light. I wanted more light. And it looks like I've been part of helping more light come into the world. That is my story for you this morning, and I'm really glad that you came up and listened. And I do believe that there is uh, some time for a Sunday school this morning where you're probably going to hear some more about the people involved with the birth of Jesus, although not probably this camel. Okay. <laughs> Auntie isn't saying yes or no, but off you go to Sunday school. Thank you so much. Our first scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. 
The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Well, now, to uh, state the terribly obvious, chapters 58 and 59 of Isaiah come before chapter 60. We heard the beginning of chapter 60 just now. As Dirk G. Lange observes at Working Preacher, chapters 58 and 59 are characterized by gloom by despair, by a call to repentance. The ways of the wicked are crooked, our transgressions are many, our sins testify against us. They are also marked by a yearning for light and glory to come. We wait for the light, but there is only darkness. The opening line of Isaiah 60 is like a thunderbolt of glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Those who first heard these words were either the exiles or the recently returned from exile, that is, the survivors of Jerusalem. It had been 70 years or more since their parents or grandparents had been taken to Babylon when Jerusalem surrendered. Now, I don't know what those folks expected to find on their return. I suspect that they hoped for better than what they found. Homes had to be constructed from the collapsed stones of the old houses. Fields had to be planted all anew. The temple had to be rebuilt. As Juliana Claussens writes at Working Preacher, the hopeful message directed to the people of Yehud is designed to help its first readers raise their eyes from the stark and devastating challenges that made up their current reality. Five and a half centuries after that today, a new religious movement arose within Judaism. It arose in desperate times once more. 
the temple that had been built by those returning exiles, well, it had been destroyed once again. Many of Jerusalem's buildings had been leveled, and according to the historians of that time, Jerusalem's entire population had been either killed or enslaved. So the followers of this new faith turned once more to those reassuring words of Isaiah, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In times of shadow, well, amidst evil committed under bright sunlight, to be honest, But in those times of shadow, the new Christian movement declared that the light had come in the person of Jesus. More light. These remain shadowy days in our world. Major wars, and that's defined as those that claim more than 10,000 lives in a year. Well, there are three of them right now, Ukraine, Ethiopia, and Myanmar. Wikipedia, I know, it's not an authoritative source, but Wikipedia lists 17 additional wars that have taken between 1,000 and 10,000 lives in the past year. 17. Politics in the United States, well, it continues to sacrifice the public good to the interests of a few. Curiously enough, we measure economics by simple activity. How much has been bought and sold without asking who benefits from that activity and who suffers. Sexism's ugly head, well, it never receded that far, but it has seemed to me that open hostility to women and women's rights has increased in my lifetime and especially in recent years. As for racism, well, I have not forgotten the chant, Jews will not replace us, from those tiki, torch-equipped marchers in Charlottesville in 2017. And I do not forget the relentless attempts to disenfranchise voters of color. It is very clear that when the words Christian nationalism are brought out with approval, that it is white supremacy that is at work. As Pete Seeger wrote, oh, when will they ever learn? More light. I could do with more light. I could do with more light, so I am going to have to seek it. The Magi, remember, they didn't just look up at the star and say, hey, more light, how nice. They got on their camels, and they followed it. The camels weren't that happy about it, but the Magi followed the light. As I said on Christmas Eve, as we were passing the light with those candles, reaching out for light is a central discipline of the faith, especially of Christian faith. Passive inactivity simply does not work. Even the contemplative life, which I admit looks an awful lot like, you know, passive inactivity. Well, those who retire from the world do so in order to focus their spiritual contemplation. Now, you don't have to to withdraw from the world in order to focus your spiritual contemplation, but you do have to make time and space to bring that focus to it. Now, what it looks like is different for everybody. 
the time and space for spiritual contemplation for some looks like solitude. For others, it looks like a small group of family members or friends that are discussing the spiritual matters. Spiritual concentration might be filled with singing or it might be filled with silence. It might be engaging in work for someone else's welfare. It might be a gift, something that helps someone else get by. A lot of people really like to put their muscle and bone into that kind of thing, to go out and work, take a hammer in their hands, and that is great. But don't forget, the Magi didn't do that. They brought gifts. And they gave things away. As it turned out, the stuff that they gave allowed the family of Jesus to escape from the hostility of Herod. If you're looking for more light, read the scriptures. Do read them carefully. You see, there's a problem with this section of Isaiah. Michael J. Chan writes at Working Preacher, reversal, this is the word that best describes the hope expressed in Isaiah 60. Through the power of God, the oppressed are put into power. Those once stripped of resources and goods not only receive what was taken from them, they become exceedingly wealthy in the process. Those driven far from Jerusalem return. The world, the text claims, is about to be turned on its head. One thing the author of Isaiah 60 did not change, however, is the organization of imperial power. The differentials and binaries present in Near Eastern empires, and many empires for that matter, remain unchanged in Isaiah 60's vision of the future. New empire, same as the last. If we're going to seek more light, let's really seek more light. Early Christians heard Isaiah's words, nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn in the story of the Magi's visit. Oh, that's how they came to be identified as kings, by the way. Matthew himself, he called them Magi, and, well, there have been endless arguments among the biblical scholars about what he meant by that. The point is that the visit of the Magi to a newborn ruler, it upset the expectations of monarchy. You see, the gifts of the Magi were offered freely, not extorted. I mean, that's what usually happens with gifts to kings. You give them lest something bad happen to you later. As for the child himself, when he became an adult, Jesus simply refused to act like a first century ruler, even one that was out of power and trying to regain the throne. He didn't gather an army. He didn't set up a tax structure. All he did was to say, follow me. And then, with stories, with healings, with blessings, he showed them what following him meant. If we want more light, we're going to have to do more of that now, aren't we? Curiously enough, it is in Isaiah 58, you know, the section that Dr. Lange thought was so harsh, that we will find our way to more light, not just for ourselves, but for those around us and for the world at large. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noon day.
Kind of nice it got brighter outside as I read that, huh? As much as you and I need more light, and we do, more light can't just be for us. It has to be for those around us. It has to be for those far away. More light comes when people are no longer kept from employment or housing because of their race or gender or sexual orientation. More light comes when we realize that insults based on race, gender, and sexual orientation not only aren't funny, they're harmful. More light comes when lies are abandoned for truth. More light comes when liars are no longer rewarded with power. More light comes when the only hunger that is left in the world comes from appreciating the scent of what's cooking instead of the hunger that comes because there's nothing to cook. Then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noon day. More light. I could do with more light. So may I find more light at the cradle side in Bethlehem. May I find more light in the wonder of the star. May I find more light in paying focused attention to the stories and the prayers and the inspiration of the faith. May I find more light in the work of both charity and justice. May I find more light in the community of those who follow Christ. May I find more light and may I contribute to bringing more light to this still dark, still shadowed world. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer. O oh God of light, as a new Congress settles into its work, we pray for wisdom among elected leaders at all settings of government. May they have wisdom, compassion, insight, open hearts and minds, and a commitment to the welfare of the people above the welfare of the politicians or the powerful. May the voters reward those who serve the common good. And for those who act out of self-interest, may the voters return them to their private lives. In short, O oh God, may we all be wise, compassionate, insightful. May we bring open hearts and minds to our commitment to the welfare of our neighbors near and far. We pray today, O oh God, for a first grade teacher in Newport News, Virginia, shot this week by one of her students. We pray for that child and for that family. We pray for those who will labor to renew the lives of teacher and student in the days ahead. We pray for families in Senegal left grieving after a collision between buses took dozens of lives. We pray for those enduring war in Ukraine, Myanmar, and Ethiopia, as well as the many other places around the world where people use violence to obtain what they want. We pray for the homeless and the hungry and the sick and the grieving. We pray, and in our homes and workplaces, we act so that tomorrow will be a brighter day. We work and pray for more light, O oh God, but the greatest light is in your keeping. The greatest light streams forth from your power. 
Shine that light upon the people of this world, O God. Shine it until evil is fully revealed and error displayed and lies shown for what they are. Shine your light until our own misunderstandings are cast away. Shine until our hearts shine as well. We thank you for the light of Jesus Christ in whose wisdom and example we seek to live and hope to thrive. Blessings to you, O God, light beyond light and love beyond love. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we turn to our hymn, Many Are the Light Beams. The Magi followed a star, a light in the sky. When the storm clouds of evil gathered, their gifts provided a way to preserve the light. Your gifts today may not rescue the Christ child, but they will bring light to the bodies and spirits of God's children, Christ's family. Let your gifts be made with the wisdom of the Magi. Whether you share your gift here in the church today through a gift online or via an envelope in the mail. Let the offering now be received.
offertory prayer. Look upon our gifts, O God, and bless them to your service. May your wisdom increase our own so that the light of Christ brightens and enfolds this shadowy world. Amen. So what's happening in the second week of the new year? Well, I'm back. Uh, Glad that uh, you put up with me uh, being absent. Uh, Actually, more grateful that you put up with me being here. So so that means that uh, Bible study resumes on Tuesday, as does the streamed song from Church of the Holy Cross on Wednesday. And 
This is coming up on the second Friday of January, and that means that there is a streamed community concert come Friday evening. Uh, also, the various boards uh, have resumed their regular meeting schedule, so we've got council following church this week and board of deacons the following week. And so we are already into it. The work of the church goes on. So take up the work of bringing more light into the places that you can. Bring it first into your own heart and soul. But once there, let it shine like a lamp on a lampstand, not hidden under a bushel basket. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.